Go bold for. And this is Uncut News. The commander of the U.S. Navy Southern Command, Pinky, swears that America is not going to build a military base in Guyana or anywhere in the Western Hemisphere for that matter. Admiral Craig S. Fowler is now in town to sign the acquisition and cross servicing agreement with the government. And following the signing of the agreement, Fowler took questions from the media. He explained that the military would only come to states in the region at the specific request of mutually agreed partnerships and not through forced intervention. But even on a request, it will still have to be for a specific exchange exercise or training. But when asked if the US would support the nation if Venezuela attacks us, he would only say that his country supports a peaceful resolution of the controversy and respect for the ongoing judicial process. All I know is that his statement better be political talk for, quote, of course we are, but let's keep that between us, am I right? On the topic of unwarranted attacks from Venezuelan criminals, late last night, three Venezuelans busted into the home of 56-year-old businessman Elroy Alam and robbed his family of three guns, 10 million Guiana dollars, and gold jewelry in his home in Port Kaituma. According to police, the men escaped by boat to Impotero near the border with Venezuela. When police and military were dispatched to the scene, they were shot at while searching along the Aurora River. They returned fire to the boat in question. However, the boat and its occupants sped off towards the Venezuelan side of the border before they could be caught. None of the cops were injured in the shootout. This morning, two fuel tankers burst into flames at first Coca Perica. According to reports, the driver of one of the trucks was badly burned by the flames. He is currently undergoing treatment at the Lenora Cottage Hospital. The fire service and the police force are currently at the scene investigating the cause of the fire. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale is this 2012 Toyota Allion. It comes with TV, navigation stereo, crystal lights, mug rims, fog lamps, and much, much more. Pay cash for 3.1 million, or pay down as low as $620,000 with around 60,000, and it's yours. Call the WhatsApp 6620844 for more info, or visit their showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Row Street, Queenstown, or Lot 2 Lamar Street, and tell them Rico sent you for this sweet deal. Now back to the topic of violations of national sovereignty. Citing reduced global demand for oil, UK-based NGO Global Witness has withdrawn its report titled Signed Away that had estimated that Guyana would lose at least 55 billion US dollars from the oil deal with Exxon. The huge slump in prices since then has led to an overestimate of oil projects' potential economic benefits. But if you ask Trotman, he says the report was a hatchet job that was specifically written to make him and his government look bad. So bad that it made them lose the elections. No, not corruption, slow growth, or any other fault of their own. Surely it was that one article that only a few hundred Guyanese actually read that did them in and nothing else. I surely believe that. Anyway, he also accused Global Witness of being economic hitmen who interfered in Guyana's internal politics in clear violation of sovereignty, decency, fairness, and balance. He also feels that the timing of the article's release was deliberate, being a month before the elections. And it looks like the legal troubles for Auntie Boulder ain't over yet. This morning, Soku called the big lady in to ask her a few questions about land sales during her time in office. Lawrence told the media that she decided to visit Soku instead of being questioned over the phone, since she could not confirm who exactly they were over the phone. Take note, future politicians, it may be a risky move, but never make deals for your freedom on the phone unless you want it recorded. Don't believe me? Ask Donald Trump. He still ain't learned that lesson. It's been at least two months since the shooting death of 15-year-old Rocky Saw, and the police have yet to return the file to the DPP, despite the fact that the DPP is confident that this is an open and shut case against the 16-year-old shooter who was accused of shooting Saw in the head with his daddy's pistol during a sleepover on November 17th. How much you want to bet his daddy's probably rich? Anyway, the shooter is currently free on $100,000 bail. Wow. 500 US dollars for shooting. No wonder people have no regard for human life here. Too many terrible drivers on the road. Don't be one of them. Book a beginner's driver's course with fast learners. Forget asking your relative to teach you. They will haul upon you like you as a dog. Fast learners are professional and makes it easy for you to learn with less anxiety. Call them now on telephone number 690-6868 or follow them on Facebook at Fast Learners Driving School. On Friday, the Police Service Commission will meet with the senior police officers who approach the High Court to block the year-end police promotions. 
Non Luol told the Chief Justice today that by meeting with the Ronks, there would be no need to take the matter back to court. Nonetheless, the next hearing in the High Court is set for February 5th. Senior Superintendent of Police Calvin Brutus was the first officer to move to the High Court to block the promotions after he was skipped over. Since his application, several other top officers also filed suit. In response, the court granted the temporary order. It's now time for today's Rona Report. Today, the nation recorded 65 new cases. The total number of deaths now stands at 170. There are now three persons in the ICU and 378 persons in home isolation. The total number of known cases in the country is now 6,653. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six feet of space between you and others. Let's take a look at news in the region. Barbados is starting 2021 with the blaze after having just experienced its sixth house fire in the first 10 days of the year, making it the scariest epidemic to strike the island since the Rona. Sunday's fire completely burned an apartment in St. James. Seeing as some of the fires were believed to have been electrical in nature, the fire chief of the island is warning pageants to check their home's wiring, or they could be next. So here's a pro tip. Replace your home's wiring every 20 years or so, unless you want your home to turn into an inferno. Great news for those of you who are still looking for an affordable smartphone. The sale has been extended. Get the Logic L60 for just $20,000. It comes with one year warranty and free digital prime bundle. Available at Cellular Plus in the City Mall, Starbucks Square, and Sunday opening at Massey Providence and Massey Turkine. Don't miss out. After a century of production in Brazil, American car giant Ford is shutting down its three factories due to the impact of the Rona. Unions of two units that will be closed said around 4,800 workers between them are affected. The automaker also said it will keep its South American headquarters, its product development center, and proving grounds in Brazil. But the manufacture of new vehicles locally will cease altogether. And now for our weird news story of the day. The Brexit has caused a great deal of legal problems for Europeans. Some serious and some just plain silly, like this case involving a driver traveling from the UK who had his ham sandwiches confiscated by Dutch border guards who said they were now prohibited under post-Brexit rules. People traveling from a non-EU country into the bloc are not allowed to bring in meat or dairy products with them, including a sandwich. So before you laugh, just know that the rule is in place to guard against the potential spread of animal diseases such as foot and mouth and swine fever. Travelers carrying undeclared meat and dairy can be fined or prosecuted under the rules which warn that any such products will be confiscated and destroyed. Probably by having someone eat it. Anyway, a limited amount of fruits and vegetables, honey and fish is allowed. But meat and cheese, no way. Who said luxury can't be affordable? Move into your own home in 2021. Lenora Estates, West Coast and Mara properties are within your reach. Move out to the landlord's place and put that rent money towards your own 5,000 square foot property. Call the WhatsApp 592-618-5702 or call telephone number plus 1-516-476-2172. Moving on to our uncut news viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your sponsors in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, do you think Maduro is serious about his threats? Conrad Thomas says, Maduro is bluffing. He's just making political footholds as any strong-minded leader would to garner his support base. Denzel Carmichael said, Maduro is backed by Russia, which landed a fancy fighter jet in Venezuela the other day. The US is doing naval exercises in disguise in Guiana waters. All I see is two large countries flexing their muscle on our doorstep because of this little oil. Bluff or not, GT, not ready for no war. I agree with you there. And Yeni Rodriguez says, the Geneva Agreement failed. Venezuela lost the area in claim from the British dispossession due to the negligence and lack of patriotic will of its leaders, including the current government. The Esequibo belongs to Guiana, not a blade of grass for Venezuelans. Good answers, people. So tonight I'll leave you with this question. How do you feel about the Admiral's visit now in the wake of Maduro's comments? Do you think it's a good thing that we're becoming more aligned with America, or is this just another deal with a different devil? 
Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in Wednesday's episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Noriko Bullford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now.